Rings of Power Season 2 is coming out in just a few weeks. And oh, is it going to be a glorious disaster. The agents of Amazon are already out in full force. If you don't like it, don't watch it. This isn't made for you. You know, if you rearrange the letters and some of the names, it spells bad things. You know what that means. Got me thinking. Yes, I know that's always a dangerous thing. But it got me thinking. Who owns Tolkien? Which led to a broader question. Who owns art? I want to start by using an example from architecture. You come to me and say, Randy, I want you to design me a building. Let's keep it simple and say it's a house. When it's all said and done, I hand you the keys and say, here you go. You're going to own the deed. You're going to legally own the property. It's your house. But here's the catch. I own the intellectual right to the design of that house. And before I hand you the keys, I'm going to photograph that house until an inch of its life. Those photographs are also my intellectual property. If you say, no, 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 I'm a private person. I don't want everybody to know what my bedroom looks like. I don't want you to publish pictures of my house. We can come to an arrangement, but I'm going to tell you all right now, it's going to cost you a pretty penny because you're buying my intellectual property. I know architects who refuse to work for clients who demand to be able to buy the intellectual rights of their projects. What's the big deal? Our drawings, photographs of our finished products, that's how we celebrate our art, how we win awards, how we promote ourselves, how we get famous, which means how we promote ourselves. Unfortunately, the contractor you hired turned out to be shady as hell. Oh, sure, Randy, typical architect, always blame the contractor. <laughs> Have you ever worked with a contractor? Some of them make Hollywood executives look ethical. This contractor cut corners on the corners he cut. The foundations crack, the walls are sagging, and the roof leaks. You decide the only option, bulldoze and start over. I show up and start screaming, no, you can't do this. This is my masterpiece, my magnum opus, the greatest work of art I've ever created. You know what your reaction is most likely going to be? You're going to call the cops. Have me escorted off the property charged with trespassing. I don't have a right to tell you what you can and can't do with your property. Let's say you hired a good contractor. The house is just fine. But years later, you learn I've become famous. My work is now celebrated as the greatest thing since sliced bread. The artistic merit of your house now has value. Here in America, most cities, all the states, and the federal government have lists of historic and culturally significant buildings. You can apply to be on one or more of those lists. You agree that in exchange for a nice plaque, some tax breaks, other benefits, you will give up some of the rights to your property. You would share ownership of your property with a preservation society. You would need to get permission before you could make any changes to your building. Anybody who bought your house would do so knowing they would share ownership of that house with a preservation society. Every now and then, a building will transcend historic and cultural significance and be history and be culture. For argument's sake, your house, the one I designed, <laughs> becomes one of those buildings that is history, is culture. But now, your grandchildren have inherited that building. And they don't care about some stinky old house. They decide they want to bulldoze it. The Historic Society says, that Randy guy, he's problematic. The symbolism in the architecture of that house, we don't like it. Get rid of it. So that means the bulldozer is going to roll, right? Not necessarily. When art is cultural, the ingrate grandkids, ideologically driven preservation society, risk such a massive public backlash, oftentimes they just don't even want to go there. My point, besides daydreaming about creating an architectural masterpiece, that even in a Western society built upon property rights, 
the ownership of art can get really murky really fast. Going back to the example of me designing a house for you. In the middle of the design phase, you come to me and say, Randy, I don't like what you're doing. I don't like the symbolism of the architecture. I don't agree with the message you're sending. I want to do something else. What do you all think would happen if I said, sit down and shut up? It's my design. I own it. I can do whatever I want to with it. If you have a problem with what I'm doing, insert sounds meant to elicit an emotional response, I can tell you all exactly what would happen. The check wouldn't clear. And when word got out how I was treating my clients, I wouldn't be getting any new ones anytime soon. In architecture, we're not allowed to advertise. It goes against our professional ethics. You get caught directly soliciting customers, you can lose your license. The reason for this stupidity is a whole nother conversation, but it's one of the reasons why architecture is rapidly becoming irrelevant. Cinema and literature, the entire entertainment industry for that matter, they haven't hamstrung themselves. They built their art around the idea of advertising. They spend billions trying to convince people to buy their products. The relationship between the entertainment industry and the public is very similar to one between a homeowner and a preservation society. The entertainment industry is begging and pleading with the public please, please give us money, power, and influence, and in exchange, we will let you have access to what we've created. Once that transaction occurs, the entertainment industry once again begs and pleads with the audience, please, please tell us that what we've done is art. Please tell us that you find what we've done personally meaningful. Please tell us that you think what we've done is culturally and historically significant. Just like when a homeowner applies to a preservation society, the entertainment industry is offering to make a bargain with the public. In exchange for you giving us money, power, and influence, we will give you some of our rights to our property. There are two types of property rights, physical ownership, and intellectual ownership. With intellectual ownership, there are two types. Legal ownership, patents, copyright, and such. And then there's art. Sometimes when we watch a movie, read a book, it resonates. It speaks to us personally. And on some very rare occasions, it can touch our soul. We internalize it. We place value on it. We take ownership of it. If enough people take ownership of a work of art, it transcends art and becomes cultural. Stagecoach, Gone with the Wind, Maltese Falcon, Casablanca, Jaws, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Peter Jackson's adaptation of The Lord of the Rings. These are all examples of films that have transcended art and become embedded in the culture. For generations, the entertainment industry honored this bargain. They went beyond honoring the bargain. They encouraged and facilitated the audience taking ownership of their movies and TV shows. Hell, they monetized it. How many of my friends growing up had Star Wars lunchboxes? A couple years ago, the entertainment industry decided they wanted to change the rules. They've said to the audience, you know that bargain we made with you? We're going to break it, suckers. Oh, by the way. We still expect to receive money, power, and influence. We demand that you acknowledge what we do is art, but you're going to sit down, shut up, and accept everything we give you, and you will have no say in the matter. If you continue to take ownership of movies and novels that we, the entertainment industry, spent generations begging you to take ownership over, we will call you insert sounds meant to elicit emotional responses, we will attack you and we will destroy you. The entertainment industry is trying to take from the audience something the entertainment industry spent generations and billions of dollars convincing the audience was rightfully theirs. Most people consider what the entertainment industry is trying to do, theft. What Hollywood has been doing the last number of years has run into another problem. 
An artist can change, modify, adapt, interpret, reinterpret their art all they want. Who shot first, Han or Greedo? In the 1977 theatrical release, Han shot first. In the 90s re-release, Greedo shot first. Quite a bit of controversy around that change. But to the best of my knowledge, no one disputes Lucas's right to make the change. Han shot first. But when a third party buys an intellectual property, they're seen as a caretaker. Their role is to protect and preserve. If they start to change, modify, manipulate, damage, destroy, they're seen as betraying a trust. They're vandals. You can't build an entire industry and its related economy around the concept of shared intellectual property and then at the last moment snatch back that shared intellectual property while at the same time screaming, cursing, attacking the very people you snatched that intellectual property from and expect things to work out well. The entertainment industry is a victim of its own success. They have created great works of art that have become embedded in the culture. Films, novels have resonated. People have internalized them, taken ownership. People take it personal, get offended when they see the things that they've taken ownership over being vandalized and destroyed. The moment the entertainment industry broke their bargain with the audience, they doom themselves. They're done. At any rate, I hope I've given you all something to think about. And until next time, you all be safe. If you all are still here, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. While you're at it, why don't you like this video, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell. You can hear me yammer on about something else next time. And feel free to share this video far and wide. Please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment.